Hello and welcome to the Caring Matters Podcast. I'm Liz Tasson and I'm here today in the kitchen of Wesley Community Services where they deliver over 300,000 meals prepared, over 300,000 meals per year. This is Steve Smokler and Tracy Harris. They're going to walk us through this kitchen and just let us know how this huge production is done. So take it away, you two. Okay, so uh, we're standing right here. This is our plating machine. And uh, after the food is all cooked and prepared, uh, it's plated. Uh, and this is what the final product looks like uh, coming off the plating machine. Uh, it's, uh, we have staff who stand on either side of the machine and fill each plate. It's a three compartment uh, tray with the entree, two vegetables, and carbohydrate, and starch. And it comes through here, it gets sealed, and then it's imprinted with the name of the contents. And then secondly, it includes the production date and then the expiration date. And uh, on any given day, we're making one of our 28 different meals, uh, our regular meals, and one of the 28 meals that are either renal meals, diabetic meals, cardiac meals. So we have a large array of meals that we're producing at any given time. And it also tells how to prepare that meal since yes. it is a frozen meal. Correct. How to do that. Yes, it tells how to prepare it. This is, uh, uh, you can put it in an oven or in a microwave and it's all recyclable. So anyone who's, uh, uh, who's concerned about the environment, they can recycle this uh, uh, with all other plastics. So this is sort of the tail end of our production. And if you look over here, uh, these are our kettles that we, we uh, cook all of our food in. So these are 60-gallon kettles and 40-gallon kettles. And as you can see, we have five different kettles. And what this allows us to do, uh, uh, it allows us to cook, for example, for making meatballs and spaghetti. We can make spaghetti in this for a thousand people in two hours. Uh, in contrast to our previous kitchen, was at, which was at Hyde Park United Methodist Church on the east side of Cincinnati, and we had an open flame stove, and it took us all day to cook the spaghetti for our clients. So this is both more efficient from a from an energy point of view, and also allows us to be much more efficient in productivity. So we cook all of our vegetables and pastas and uh, sauces and, and other things right right here. We then uh, refrigerate anything that we cook overnight because uh, all of our food is, is packaged in what's called cooked chill method. So it's a safer process inhibiting the growth of any bacteria or foreign bodies. So uh, we cook it, we cook it, we plate it, and then we just move it just about 60 feet over to our freezers for freezing and storage until uh, those meals are prepared and organized for any client to order them. Do your clients ever get fresh produce? Yes, we had a program this past summer with Ohio Arm, and the program's called Living Gardens, and the Ohio Arm sponsors uh, Cincinnati Community Gardens with some funding and in return they raise produce that we then either pick up or they bring to us and then we can distribute those tomatoes, uh, potatoes, uh, cucumbers to our clients who really have no other opportunity to get fresh fruits and right. vegetables. Great idea. Yeah. So sometimes in addition to this, if the season is right, right. You know, you'll also get a delivery of the fresh stuff. That's correct. That's We're really proud of that. Yeah, and tell us about how are these meals rated, like for taste? I'm sure you check in with your clients occasionally and say, what is it like, don't yes, like? Yes, yes. We, uh, we modify our meals every six months, and uh, we do client satisfaction studies to see what meals people like. It's, it's a challenge because uh, about 80% of our clients are female, and they all were great cooks. So it's, it's tough with trying to duplicate the meals that they make. But uh, we're rated actually in terms of client satisfaction in the first part of 2012 as number one in the region. So we're real happy about that. Wow, very good. That's, a, that's quite a compliment. Yeah. It is. It's not anything to do with my cooking. <laughs> <laughs> and it looks like you keep a special 
especially clean facility here. In, uh, yeah, we have, yeah, we have a wonderful staff, and you can see uh, it's just uh, clean, spick and span. We have a large uh, uh, area where we are pantry, where we're storing our food, shoes, and desserts, and all food products in the other rooms, but this is the heart of the facility. So dessert comes too? Yes. And drinks? Yes. So they're not just getting this meal when no. they get a meal? That's correct. Through okay. meals on wheels, you get, you get milk, you get bread, and we're, we provide a loaf of bread to each client every two weeks. So there's between 30 and 35 slices of bread in each, in each loaf, so they have more bread than just the meals, so they have a little extra. We also provide clients who get weekly deliveries from us, half gallons of milk so that they have at least one additional serving beyond the seven that are required. And then they get to choose fruit juices and desserts. The juices are 100% juices, not watered down. And then uh, we're the only program in Southwest Ohio uh, that I know of that offers fresh fruit. So we offer banana, oranges, and apples in season. So we really try to put all, all of our money into the resources that go back to the clients. Wonderful, wonderful. Is there anything else we want to point out in the kitchen? Uh, no, not really. We covered, uh, yeah, we covered everything? Okay, yeah. great meals. Well, I want to thank you all for listening. I want to thank Steve and Tracy for being with us on the, in the kitchen here at Wesley Community Services. I'm Liz Tassone. I want to thank you for listening and always remember that caring matters. Hello and welcome to the Caring Matters Podcast. I'm Liz Tassone. I'm the volunteer host and I'm here today with Steve Smokler and Tracy Karras and they're with the Wesley Community Services. And in this first podcast what we want to talk about is they've got a really special uh, meals program and so we want to talk about their home delivered meals and and how it all started and where it is today. So uh, welcome, Steve and Tracy. Thank Thanks. you. Thanks for being here. So let's give a little history about the meals program that you guys are so famously known for here. Okay. Well, uh, Wesley Community Services had its uh, beginnings, its origins with Wesley Hole Nursing Home, which was a nonprofit in, uh, skilled nursing facility for indigents on the west side of Cincinnati. And uh, they had a waiting list in the early 80s, and their board of trustees decided to uh, at least help the people on the waiting list by delivering meals to them. So that's the origin of our Meals on Wheels program, and then it's just grown through uh, funding, through public funding, through the senior services levy, levy and the Medicaid passport program. And uh, it's grown to, in 2012, we delivered uh, over 330,000 meals in greater Cincinnati and northern wow. Kentucky. And one of the uh, true uh, hallmarks of our program is that we offer therapeutic meals. So we're the only provider of therapeutic meals as far as we know in northern in Kentucky and also in Hamilton County. And that's for people with special chronic illnesses. Okay, so what, tell me, I don't know what a therapeutic meal would be yeah. what that what is that what why would I need one well if if you have a chronic illness like diabetes heart heart disease renal disease or have swallowing or chewing problems uh, we make specialized meals so that it meets your nutritional requirements under o any of those diseases and uh, we've been offering those specialized therapeutic meals since 2006 in our and we cook them in our own Meals on Wheels kitchen and uh, through the Council on Aging uh, those meals are available for people with special diet needs. Okay, very good. So about how many clients do you serve with those 300,000 meals that you are? Uh, at any one time we uh, have uh, between uh, 1,200 and 1,400 clients but the clients can stay with us. For example, let's just say uh, you have to have a hip replacement. You may be in the hospital and at home and be uh, incapacitated for a, a, a month. You can get meals just for a month, so we have clients who use us for a very short period of time, and then we have clients who, who we've been serving for seven, eight years. Wow. So really, it's based on the client need and uh, how we can make sure that we 
support them so they stay in their homes for as long as possible. So that's essentially your mission is to help people stay where they want to be. Correct. That's uh, we do everything with that in mind. Okay. And Tracy, your part, you've got a new program, or maybe it's not new, but it's called Meals for You. So mm -hmm. tell us about that part of it. Sure. How this differs is this program is available for the general population. With our therapeutic meals, we recognize the unfortunate epidemic um, of individuals with diabetes in the area. So this program is approved by the American Diabetes Association. The meals have actually been developed uh, by our Nutrition Advisory Board, which is comprised of registered dietitians. So they meet the dietary guidelines of um, individuals with diabetes. Okay, so the meals for you is specific to a di diabetes. Is that, that is correct. correct. Okay. However, it's important to know, and it's something I've learned, that anyone can benefit from this diet. So there's no prescription needed. You do not really even need to be diagnosed with diabetes to order these meals. So do you have to be homebound? Like, is there some criteria that says, here's, here's what we're going for in, no. in terms of this meal? No, there are no pre-qualifying questions to be, or, be, to be able to order these. Wow. It's for the general population, and they're $5 a piece. They are still delivered, just like our Meals on Wheels program is, and that would be to their home or their place of employment even. Wow. So okay. We, yeah. we have some people who are interested because they have a, a, an adolescent who may have uh, type 1 diabetes, and, you know, nutrition control is so key, and it just provides a backup or an alternative so that people don't have to worry about, it, about planning a meal. Yeah, and if you're cooking for your entire family and you've got one person that has right. really special needs, and mm -hmm. so this would allow that flexibility to still make some of your old favorites and yet still provide nutrition. Right, and there's 28 nutrition. meals available. There's breakfast, lunch, and dinner, so there's a wide variety for them to choose from. Each meal, you can see the nutritional value, so they'll know how many carbohydrates, how much protein, how many calories, all the things that they need to take into account when preparing their meals, and it's done for them. Okay logistics of this if I um, begin to need or desire the um, the meals and I would like them five days a week are they delivered five days a week or are they do I get five in one day how does the how does that work you would get the five in one day because we we do ask you to order a minimum of five okay um, so they would all five would be delivered to you at once and they are delivered frozen and then you just store them in your freezer and they will keep up for up to four months okay so there's no requirement of being housebound. This is just no. a, a, is this a fairly new idea for Wesley? It is new for us, yes. Yeah. Yes, we're real excited about it, actually. And how has it been going so far? Are you getting a good response? or? Just yeah, yeah. It's just been a matter of getting out in the community, creating awareness of this product. Um, so people do know this is available for everyone. Again, there's no pre-qualifying factors, which many people assume there are right so for specific to the meals for you which are a diabetic meal mm -hmm. there's no pre-qualifying what about your other meal program that you've developed is that something that's subsidized and so has to have some kind of qualifying yes criteria yeah uh, most of all of our other meals come through the meals on wheels program that's administered in ohio through southwest ohio by the council on aging of southwestern ohio and in the eight counties of Northern Kentucky by the Northern Kentucky Area Development District. And they all have similar requirements, criteria uh, through that were established through the federal government, which pays part of the cost of it. So for example, you have to be 60 years of age and older. You have to have a medical condition and you're not able to drive. Uh, there's you know some wiggle room in that, but that's the basic requirement, 60 years of age and older and be homebound and uh, then you would qualify. So if you're a, a person who's getting dialysis uh, and need uh, transportation to get to the dialysis facilities, you may be eligible for these specialized therapeutic meals that we offer. Right now, uh, we have uh, almost 300 clients in greater Cincinnati that are receiving the therapeutic meals from us on a either the daily or weekly basis. Okay, so um, tell me about your drivers. Are you using volunteer drivers, professional drivers? What is? That's a good question. All of our drivers are paid drivers because it's a complicated uh, task and it's uh, a lot of responsibilities. So we, we uh, have uh, paid drivers. 
the average age of our drivers are is a little over 60 years of age and they come with a variety of backgrounds so we have quite a few uh, uh, retired police officers who, mm. who deliver meals for us. We have retired postal workers, librarians, marketing people. It's just a, a very interesting group. The, the main, uh, I think, uh, the main character that they have is that they, they like people. And in fact, uh, uh, just this uh, past couple of weeks, we found out that uh, client satisfaction for our meals is number one in the region. Wow. Uh, so we were real pleased with that, both in the meal delivery and uh, and we were very high in terms of quality of the of the meals themselves. And with our program, if you having frozen meals, it affords us the opportunity to offer choice to the clients. So right now, uh, if a client gets weekly meals from us, either through the Meals on Wheels program, uh, they can select any one of the 28 entrees that we have, and then they can also select all their fruit juices and desserts. So it's almost like going, having a home delivered restaurant. So if you like meatballs and spaghettis, you can have, and you get seven meals a week through the Council on Aging, you can get seven meatballs and spaghetti meals. If that's what you really like. Wow, very good. Now, I would also think that as a caregiver, the fact that uh, a professional driver is meeting uh, my loved one once a week, um, just another person kind of saying hello, checking in. Uh, is it at times that there's almost like a relationship built uh, between driver and, and... Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, some of our drivers have been taking care of the same clients for a number of years. They uh, turn, uh, regulate their thermostat. Some of them uh, shovel their driveway. We had one driver wow. who uh, climbed, uh, wasn't able to get out, uh, and walk her dog, so he would walk her dog when he delivered the meals. But what was really gives me chills is him and his wife would come on the weekends to walk her dog so that she would have a companion. Wow. So nutrition comes in many forms, right. it sounds like. Yes. Right. Yeah, right. yeah. Very good. What a, what a lovely program and what a, a great asset to the Cincinnati community that you're here to serve uh, so many people. And uh, so thank you for that. Yeah. Appreciate you're welcome. being with us. Uh, I want to thank our sponsors to this website. That's Vitas Hospice, Hillebrand Home Health, Home Care by Blackstone, Family Bridges Home Care, Lifespan Bailey. And thank you to both Tracy and Stephen for being with us today. I'm Liz Tasson, and always remember that caring matters. Hello and welcome to the Caring Matters podcast. I'm Liz Tasson, and I'm here today in the kitchen of Wesley Community Services where they deliver over 300,000 meals prepared, over 300,000 meals per year. This is Steve Smokler and Tracy Harris. They're gonna walk us through this kitchen and just let us know how this huge production is done. So take it away, you two. Okay, so uh, we're standing right here. This is our plating machine. And uh, after the food is all cooked and prepared, uh, it's plated. Uh, and this is what the final product looks like uh, coming off the plating machine. Uh, it's, uh, we have staff who stand on either side of the machine and fill each plate. It's a three compartment uh, tray with the entree, two vegetables, and carbohydrate, and starch. And it comes through here, it gets sealed, and then it's imprinted with the name of the contents. And then secondly, it includes the production date and then the expiration date. And uh, on any given day, we're making one of our 28 different meals, uh, our regular meals, and one of the 28 meals that are either renal meals, diabetic meals, cardiac meals. So we have a large array of meals that we're producing at any given time. And it also tells how to prepare that meal since yes. it is a frozen meal. Correct. How to do that. Yes, it tells how to prepare it. This is, uh, uh, you can put it in an oven or in a microwave and it's all recyclable. So anyone who's, uh, uh, who's concerned about the environment, they can recycle this uh, uh, with all other plastics. So this is sort of the tail end of our production. And if you look over here, uh, these are our kettles that we, we uh, cook all of our food in. So these are 60-gallon kettles and 40-gallon kettles. And as you can see, 
we have five different kettles. And what this allows us to do, uh, uh, it allows us to cook, for example, for making meatballs and spaghetti. We can make spaghetti in this for a thousand people in two hours. Uh, in contrast to our previous kitchen, was at, which was at Hyde Park United Methodist Church on the east side of Cincinnati, and we had an open flame stove, and it took us all day to cook the spaghetti for our clients. So this is both more efficient from a from an energy point of view, and also allows us to be much more efficient in productivity. So we cook all of our vegetables and pastas and uh, sauces and, and other things right right here. We then uh, refrigerate anything that we cook overnight because uh, all of our food is, is packaged in what's called cook chill method. So it's a safer process inhibiting the growth of any bacteria or foreign bodies. So uh, we cook it, we cook it, we plate it, and then we just move it just about 60 feet over to our freezers for freezing and storage until uh, those meals are prepared and organized for any client who orders them. Do your clients ever get fresh produce? Yes, we had a program this past summer with Ohio Arm, and the program is called Living Gardens, and the Ohio Arm sponsors uh, Cincinnati Community Gardens with some funding, and in return, they raise produce that we then either pick up or they bring to us, and then we can distribute those tomatoes, uh, potatoes, uh, cucumbers to our clients who really have no other opportunity to get fresh fruits or right. vegetables. Great idea. Yeah. So sometimes in addition to this, if the season is right, right. You know, you'll also get a delivery of the fresh stuff. That's correct. That's We're really proud of that. Yeah. And tell us about how are these meals rated, like for taste? I'm sure you check in with your clients occasionally and say, what is it like, don't yes. like? Yes. We, uh, we modify our meals every six months and open, uh, we do client satisfaction studies to see what meals people like. It's, it's a challenge because uh, about 80% of our clients are female and they all were great cooks. So it's, it's tough with trying to duplicate the meals that they make. But uh, we're rated actually in terms of client satisfaction in the first part of 2012 as number one in the region. So we're real happy about that. Wow, very good. That's a, that's quite a compliment. Yeah. It is. It's not anything to do with my cooking. <laughs> <laughs> and it looks like you keep a especially clean facility here. In, uh, yeah, we have, yeah, we have a wonderful staff, and you can see uh, it's just a clean, spick and span. We have a large uh, area where And drinks? Yes. So they're not just getting this meal when no. they get a meal? That's correct. For okay. meals on meals, you get, you get milk, you get bread, and we're, we provide a loaf of bread to each client every two weeks. So there's between 30 and 35 slices of bread in each, in each loaf, so they have more bread than just the meals, so they have a little extra. We also provide clients who get weekly deliveries from us, half gallons of milk so that they have at least one additional serving beyond the seven that are required. And then they get to choose fruit juices and desserts. The juices are 100% juices, not watered down. And then uh, we're the only program in Southwest Ohio uh, that I know of that offers fresh fruit. So we offer banana, oranges, and apples in season. So we really try to put all, all of our money into the resources that go back to the clients. Wonderful, wonderful. Is there anything else we want to point out in the kitchen? Uh, no, not really. We covered, uh, yeah, we covered everything? Okay, yeah. great meals. Well, I want to thank you all for listening. I want to thank Steve and Tracy for being with us on the in the kitchen here at Wesley Community Services. I'm Liz Tassone. I want to thank you for listening and always remember that caring matters. Hello and welcome to the Caring Matters Podcast. I'm Liz Tassone, the volunteer host, and I'm here at Wesley Community Services 
with Steve Smokler and Tracy Karras. And they talked to us in a previous uh, podcast about the Wesley Meal Program, which is kind of the heart mm -hmm. of what they do. But there was something that naturally progressed out of that, and we're going to talk about that. So, uh, Steve, tell us what happened when you started delivering meals to um, mostly older adults in the area and what you found out. Sure. Well, this was about seven years ago in 2006. We found out that our Meals on Wheels clients were sharing their meals with their dog or, dog or cat. And that's because uh, under the Meals on Wheels program, you have to be homebound. So by definition, you really can't get out to deliver, to, to shop for most any uh, anything else. And uh, we found out that about, uh, we found that our clients were sharing their meals on wheels with their dog or cat. Mm. So that wasn't good either for the pet, and it certainly wasn't good for our clients. Um, and we found out that about 15 to 20 percent of our clients have a dog or cat. Some have more than one, uh, but on on the whole, uh, it was about 15 to 20 percent have have a dog or cat. So initially, this was back in 2006. We uh, partnered with IAMS and yeah. the SPCA, and they helped us provide free pet food to our clients. Uh, since that time, uh, we now uh, are self-supporting, and uh, so uh, we accept donations from individuals and organizations, or pet food mm -hmm. from people mm -hmm. or organizations, and we deliver those to any of our Meals on Wheels clients in Southwest Ohio and Hamilton and Butler County, or in the northern uh, eight counties of Kentucky. So, how much do we deliver? Well, uh, we deliver somewhere around 400 pounds a week. Wow. So that's all, all, a lot of pet food. In fact, uh, two years ago we did get a delivery from IAMS of 40,000 pounds of pet food, one whole truckload. Wow. And we used that up in a, a little over a year, year and a half. So uh, it, it consumes a lot, uh, but it really does a great service for our clients. And, and then we got some requests from our clients uh, that they needed help with the veterinary services because some of our clients, although not all of our clients, are low income. And so we started using donated funds for helping our uh, clients get the veterinary services for their dog or cat. And wow. why do we do all this? We do this because most of these clients are live alone, their pet is their only social contact, and the stimulation and and relationship that the people have to their dog or cat uh, helps them stay alive and s stay independent and uh, so that's why we do it and uh, I can attest to that because I have my uh, my first dog is uh, Moses. Moses here <laughs> is and, we want to dedicate this podcast to Moses <laughs> because he is he is why you know the love of a absolutely of a and as I pet. tell all my friends that I hope I treated my son <laughs> half as good as I treated Moses because you develop a relationship with your dog or cat that uh, really uh, transcends a lot of things that you get from human relationships. Amen. So true. Now, Tracy, you coordinate the um, Meals for You, the new program that's um, delivering meals to diabetics. Mm -hmm. um, how uh, is this something you're able to incorporate to this uh, this aspect of it? Are you able to offer the same people you deliver the the diabetic meals to? Not on the Meals for You Not program, yet. unfortunately, okay. at this time. Yeah. Okay. Now, those meals are still available on our Meals on Wheels program, however, right. where those could be offered to. Okay, so if they are overlap through the Meals on Wheels, then you can also provide that. Mm -hmm. okay. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Very good. This is just mm -hmm. wonderful. So, we're finding out that not only are there Meals on Wheels available for you or your loved one, but there's also Meals on Wheels for your doggy or cat, right? Correct. Mm -hmm. Wow. So that's really cool. So uh, what I love about it is is how it evolved, first yes. of all. You know, you saw that, hey, they're sharing the meals and they, these are expensive. And, and so how do we provide the real nutrition mm -hmm. that these animals need and help these mm -hmm. older adults or uh, folks be able to mm -hmm. hold on to their their loving pet for right. as long as possible because I have a dog as well and we all know the 
the love and care we get from those animals. Right. And so, uh, Wesley Community Services focuses to keep seniors independent as long as possible. So really when you have that as your mission, the services that you offer can vary based on fulfilling that mission. So whoever knew that we would get into yeah. taking care of dogs and cats. Yeah. It's very creative, very organic. It's, it's just a beautiful uh, outgrowth of your meals program. Right. Very cool. So I think we're going to conclude this podcast and just know that uh, Fido is being taken care of as well by, by the Wesley Community Services. We're very happy to report that. Uh, I want to also thank our podcast sponsors, which are Vitas Hospice, Hillebrand Home Health, Home Care by Blackstone, Family Bridges Home Care, Lifespan, and Bailey. Thank you to Steve and Tracy. Thank you. And on behalf of Moses and myself, I'm Liz Tassone. I want to thank you for listening and always remember that caring matters. Hello and welcome to the Caring Matters podcast. I'm Liz Tassone, the volunteer host, and I'm here today at Wesley Community Services with Steve Smokler and Tracy Karras. And they are going to talk to us about, we've talked to them already about their their home delivered meal program and their specialized meal program mm -hmm. that uh, Tracy's in charge of, and their pet care program which is amazing and now we're going to talk to them about some of the other things that uh, Wesley Community Services does uh, which is their home care personal care transportation and Wesley links so where do you want to begin with that what are some of your things well, you want to talk about well we can talk about our specialized transportation okay. so uh, uh, we provide uh, senior transportation uh, in Hamilton County for seniors who need to get to the doctor or hospital or treatment center or lab or whatever. And uh, we do that six days a week. And we, uh, we do, uh, instead of curb to curb, we have door-to-door -door service. So we help the senior from their mm -hmm. apartment down the stairs, across the street, whatever is necessary, into the transport vehicle and then we take them from the transport vehicle up to their office, or the physician's office, mm. and, and we don't drop them off at the front, the front door or anything, so we make sure that they're accompanied. And our transportation service operates six days a week, and we start as early as four in the morning, three in the morning for dialysis clients or any other clients, and uh, we're very proud of our service. Uh, in 2003, we were recognized by the American Automobile Association Foundation as the outstanding senior transportation program in the United States. So that's wow. really great for Cincinnati. And uh, last year, we did 33,000 one-way uh, transports. Wow. And so we're very proud of those activities. We have uh, approximately 25 vehicles. Half of them are wheelchair accessible vans, and the remaining ones are automobiles primarily Ford focuses and the reason we have those is that if you don't need a wheelchair and you're ambulatory it's a lot more comfortable being in a car than in a van mm -hmm. a wheelchair accessible van so we operate those six days a week and how how is it that this is paid for is this pay uh, charged to anyone who uses it or well you can be a private pay client and contract uh, call us up and we can transport you in addition to that, uh, we're a provider through the Council on Aging uh, of Southwestern Ohio, so we transport individuals through the Senior Services Levy Program and also individuals who are on the Medicaid Passport Program. So it's eligible for anyone who's a client of the Council on Aging. In addition to that, we also transport individuals with developmental disabilities to job sites. So we have a contract okay. with the uh, Hamilton County Board of Developmental Disabilities, and we have a significant number of people that we transport on a regular basis to their job site. And we do that because when people are going to their job, that's usually not the time that seniors are going to mm. their medical appointments. So we're able to use the same vehicle for multiple purposes and, and help us keep our costs low. Okay. If, um do you have to stay within, like the client has to live in Hamilton County? Yes. Does the doctor that you're transporting to have to be? No. We can, as long as the client is in Hamilton County, we can take them wherever the Council on Aging 
gives approval for, and if it's a private uh, transport that's arranged between us and the individual party, we'll be happy to take them wherever they want. Very good. Um, could you give us a phone number that folks could call if they uh, would like, you know, either the transportation, and we've talked about the meals program, the specialized meals program. Right. Is there one central number for all of this that we can give? Yes, it's 513-661-2777. Uh, we have a website also, it's uh, wesleycs.org, and then uh, we've developed a specialized website for our diabetic home delivered meals program, and that's meals, the number four, you, y-o-u dot org, and you can order our meals, our diabetic meals directly on the website, or you can call our number and talk to a, a person, and, and they can take your order directly. Okay, so that number that you've given is a central number yes. for your meals, for your transportation, for your pet care, uh, for your specialized meals that you do. Yes. So that's one, one number for that. And right. uh, Margaret will also post that on that's this great. website for us uh, so that people will have that also in writing. Um, you also do some um, something, well, you do home care yes. program as well. So yes. tell us about that. Uh, we provide personal care services and homemaking services in uh, the majority of, uh, of Hamilton County and also in Butler County. And also in Butler County, we provide what's called independent living assistance. So individuals who are need help in check writing or bill paying or uh, applications to Medicaid or housing, we have a social worker up there who works with clients uh, to accomplish those goals. And in uh, Hamilton and Butler County, for our homemaking and personal care services, we have uh, nurses who supervise the the care provided by our home care assistants who are all uh, bonded and safe and uh, uh, acceptable to go in it, into anybody's household. Yeah, that's a, that's a biggie because yep. I think a lot of people are hesitant about bringing someone into their home. Yeah, and I would so, be. Yeah. Right. So this is, everybody's been checked out. Yeah, everyone has gone through a criminal background check before they're hired. We also have uh, pre-employment uh, drug screening and then we have a regularly scheduled uh, random drug screening of all of our employees. Not all agencies have that. And then, in addition, we're, all of our employees are commercially bonded so that, uh, God forbid, something happens, the client doesn't have to worry about it. We're, as an agency, responsible. Very good. Now, are there waiting lists for any of your programs? And I mean the meals, the, the specialized meals. Uh, any, anything have a waiting list, the personal care? As far as we know, not in uh, not in Ohio. We also provide Meals on Wheels in uh, the eight counties of northern Kentucky. And uh, to the best of my mo my knowledge, there is a limited waiting list on that. Okay. Uh, but it, because their funding obviously is different and comes through uh, the state of Kentucky. In Ohio, as far as I know, there's no waiting list right now for any of those services. And transportation, are you able to provide that for most of the folks who call? Oh, yeah. we. Uh, we get there's only a handful of people use it privately because it's it's not inexpensive. Uh, most of our clients come through the Council on Aging, so they've already been uh, deemed eligible for the service. Okay. And then we provide the service as a as one of uh, multiple providers that are allowed to do that through the council. Very good. Very good. Well, let's uh, quickly talk about Wesley Links too. That's sure. a program that you guys. Oh, how did that? Uh, occur for you and well about 10 years ago uh, there were some news reports saying that the average age of a Cincinnati church congregation member was in their late 50s and so we all thought that it would be a good idea to work with the churches to help them better serve their congregation members so out of that those discussions we established Wesley links and that's an educational network where uh, participating churches uh, get information at meetings that are held five times a year from specialists in the area of aging because even as a professional and when I was taking care of my own mother I couldn't figure out what services how to arrange services for her so it's a it's a very uh, it's a very difficult task and so we want to give the church and their lay leadership 
as many tools as possible by knowing what's going on. So we have this program five times a year and uh, right now in Hamilton County we have over 70 churches of all denominations who participate and meet on a regular basis and learn from these experts about how to better serve their senior congregation members or to help caregivers serve their parents better. Very good, very good. So uh, all this information that we've talked about uh, might be accessible <coughs> on your website? Yes, Is that right? it's, it's all okay. on the website. So you can learn more and they yes. can, our viewers can check in and, mm -hmm. and see all that you're providing, which is incredible. It's a, a great asset to the Cincinnati area, so thank you. Um, so I want to thank again our guests today, Tracy Karras and Steve Smokler, for being with us and sharing with wow. us all that Wesley Community yeah. Services does for the Cincinnati, Ohio area. We're really appreciative. And um, I also want to thank our sponsors to this web website, Vitas Hospice, Hillebrand Home Health, Home Care by Blackstone, Family Bridges Home Care, Lifespan, and Bailey. And you can click on any one of those on this page and it will take you directly to their site. So I want to thank, uh, thank them as well. I'm Liz Tassone. I want to thank you for listening and always remember that caring matters. <laughs>